Hello ladies and gentlemen and welcome to Mr. Sacedo's YouTube videos. Today we're going to be looking at the gas laws, so make sure you fill in your notes as you go, and that if you have any questions, you ask tomorrow. All right, Boyle's Law. Uh, there are three key gas laws, and the first one we're going to talk about is called Boyle's Law. This handsome man is Robert Boyle. He looks like any rich white guy at the time in a powdered wig. Uh, he performed a gas experiment where he was measuring changes in volume and changes in pressure. In order for his experiment to work, he had to keep all of his gases at a constant temperature, though. And so here's how you can picture it. I'm just going to do a really crappy drawing real quick. Uh, if you have a piston filled with gas, all right, and then here's, here's the little top part of the piston that you can push down. Uh, there is gas inside of this piston, okay? And so the amount of space this takes up is the volume. And what he found is that if you apply pressure to this um, and increase the pressure, you can get changes in volume. So just think through this. If you change the pressure, what happens to the volume inside of this? If you increase the pressure or if you decrease the pressure, what happens to the volume? Because that is what his outcome was and what he concluded. So in case you didn't realize this, the outcome is as follows. The volume goes down and decreases as pressure increases. So again, I'll draw my little piston up here. All right. If I push this piston down, the pressure is going to be going up. Now, as the pressure goes up, though, the volume is going to be going down. And that is technically what his conclusion was. Pressure and volume are inversely proportional. That is a fancy term for if one variable goes up, like pressure, another variable will go down, like volume. Okay? And we call this Boyle's Law. We named it after him. And this is technically what Boyle's Law looks like, right here at the bottom. P1 times V1 equals P2 times V2. And all that tells us is that if pressure goes up, volume goes down. And so, you will have a new pressure, and you'll have a new volume. And that's all Boyle's Law stating. Now, a really, really important thing for you to recognize is this right here, this graph. So make sure you draw this graph in your notes, and make sure you have your volume in the correct spot, and you have your pressure in the correct spot. Okay, but that's this is what an inversely proportional graph looks like when you graph it. It looks like a curved line like this. And what you should notice is that uh, they never hit the axes. So this curve will forever go up and forever go horizontal, but it will never ever hit the axes. So these little axes that we have are never going to touch the line, or sorry, the curve inside of that space. And that's Boyle's Law. Now let's talk about the second gas law, which is called Charles' Law, named after this guy, Jacques Charles, French in case you didn't notice. Um, he was looking at different variables. So instead of looking at pressure and volume, he was interested in volume and temperature. Those were his two things. And what he realized, just like Boyle, is that you have to uh, maintain something constant. And so pressure had to be constant in order for his experiment to work. And so how are we going to picture his experiment? Well, think of having a balloon. All right, a balloon like this filled with gas molecules. All right, so there's gas molecules zipping around on the inside of this balloon. So what happens if I change the temperature of this balloon? What happens if all of a sudden I start to warm up this balloon? What happens to the gas inside of the balloon? Okay, so in other words, if I change the temperature, what happens to the amount of space the gas molecules take up? Just think that through. And then what about the opposite? What if I cool this down? What would happen to the gas inside of the balloon? So just think through that. And maybe you can figure out on your own then what his outcome was and what his conclusion would be. So what was his conclusion? As temperature goes up, volume goes up. 
And again, that just makes sense. So let me draw my weird little balloon thing again. Uh, if you take a balloon and you apply enough heat to this, so we start heating it up, uh, the balloon will start to swell up and expand. And so the balloon will swell up. What does that mean? That means that as temperature goes up, okay, uh, volume goes up. And that means that if temperature went down, volume would go down. If you put a balloon in a freezer, it will shrink. And so what do we call that relationship? That type of relationship is called a direct proportion. So temperature and volume are directly proportional. What does that mean? That means that if one variable goes up, the other variable goes up. If one variable goes down, the other variable goes down. And that's what a direct proportion is. So what do we call that? We call that Charles' Law. And how do you represent that mathematically? It's right here at the bottom. V1 over T1 equals V2 over T2. That's what a direct proportion is. If one variable increases, the other variable increases. Now compare that to Boyle's Law. Boyle's Law was kind of the opposite. If pressure went up, then volume went down, and that's why that is an inverse proportion, okay? So a very important thing for you to recognize again is you need to draw this graph. So this graph is really important. It shows the connection between volume and temperature. So again, make sure you label your axes, and yes, what you would get is a nice straight line if you graphed volume over temperature, and that's Charles' Law. Finally, we have Gay-Lussac, and so Joseph Gay-Lussac, uh, this is what he looks like right here. Uh, he was interested, and his experiment's a little bit more dangerous, in changes in pressure and in temperature. And again, just like the previous guys, he found out that you have to keep something constant, and so you have to keep volume constant in order for this to work. So we can think of his experiment as kind of being this, and something that you should definitely not do, but I'll draw it anyway. Let's say you have a can or a sealed container filled with gas inside of it, and then you apply heat to it. So let's say we have, you know, I don't know, some container that is nice and sealed shut, and we add, you know, a lot of heat to that what is going to happen to the pressure inside of that container? So what would the pressure do if I increased the temperature? And again, think through that. And then maybe you can find out what his outcome was in his conclusion without necessarily me needing to tell you. What was his outcome? Obviously, as you increase temperature, the pressure increases. If I draw my weird little drawing again, I have a sealed container of this. Obviously, the hotter this gets, so if I add flame to this and the temperature goes up, the pressure inside of there is also going to go up. In fact, eventually the pressure will become so great it will destroy the container and it will explode. So pressure and temperature, again, have this relationship. If pressure goes up, temperature goes up. So what does that mean? That means it is also directly proportional. So the same way that Charles' law showed us that volume and temperature were directly proportional to each other, Gay-Lussac's law tells us that pressure and temperature are directly proportional to each other. And yes, that's what we call this. So we call this Gay-Lussac's law, and mathematically it can be represented at the bottom here. P1 over T1 equals P2 over T2. Just like the last two, this graph is very, very, very important. So make sure you label the axes correctly. And yes, if you were to graph the pressure of something over the temperature of it, you would again get a nice straight line. And that is evidence of a direct proportion. And that's it. So if you need to go back, make sure you do, and just kind of check out what Boyle's Law says and Charles' Law and Gay-Lussac's Law, because we're going to be utilizing all this information tomorrow.